In today's video, I would like to show you my latest creation, which is this website right here, prompttoxls.com. Now, this website does exactly what it says in the name. So, it converts a prompt to the OpenAI API into a downloadable spreadsheet in XLS format. Let me demonstrate how it works. So, I will take one of my pre-planned prompts here. A full body workout plan with five exercises for a beginner lifter, including a volume calculator. So if I put in this prompt and I click download XLS, it will think for a while and then it will hopefully give me an XLS file. Now admittedly this is pretty slow, but that is because of the OpenAI API. And I guess the prompt that I give it is not the best kind of prompt or the data it has to generate is difficult to generate. But here we got our XLS file. So let's click here and download this file. And what do we have here? We have some exercises. We have squats, bench, overhead press, deadlift and pull-ups. And we have a volume calculation here. So it actually did the formula here. So sets times reps times weight is the volume. And then it added the total volume, which will be the sum of all of these. Now let's try another one. Here we have a comparison between hosting companies use five real hosting companies, including monthly price and support for PHP, Python and Node.js. And let's generate this XLS file. Now, of course, this will not be up to date and I wouldn't trust the numbers that this gives, but still it's a fun example. So let's see what it comes up with. And here we have an XLS file. Let's download it and see what it did. Okay, so now, <laughs> Sometimes this happens. It actually didn't use real company names. It just made up some information. Company A, company B, and so on. But uh, let me tweak this. Use actual names of five real hosting companies, including monthly price. Okay, let's generate this one. And here we have it. Let's download it and open it. Now we have GoDaddy, Namecheap, HostGator, 1 and 1, Ionos. I've never heard about that. And Bluehost. And... Uh, I'm not sure about the prices, if they are correct. They're for sure not up to date, but maybe at the time that this model was trained, these were the prices. And then here we have support for PHP. Everyone supports PHP. Everyone supports Python, but not everyone supports Node.js. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Now here we are getting a bit more complicated. We have an expense tracker that has the columns expense, category, and amount. Add 15 empty rows for expenses. After the expenses, add a summary of costs per category. Categories are food, housing, transportation, and fun. So let's see what it does this time. And it's ready. Let's take a look. And look at this. We have expense, we have category, we have amount. And then here we have total expenses by category. Food, housing, transportation, and fun and total expenses. Now this is a bit weird, the positioning of these cells here, but let's see these formulas. Okay, so it added this sum if formula. So if the category is food, then sum from this amount. And housing is sum if they are housing. So if I add something here like burger and food and five, then here we have five for food. And if I add something else like fries, and again, food and four. Now we have nine for food. And let's add something else. Gas, which is transportation and 100. And we are adding to transportation 100. So it works. So let's move on to the next example. I have lots of these. So here, now we are getting to the part where it doesn't always make it correctly, but if you try it multiple times and you tweak the prompt, then it will make it properly. So let's see, now that I'm making a video, what will happen. <laughs> will we get the correct version or something else? So we are generating a daily work time sheet for five days that calculates the total number of worked hours per day based on times of arrival, lunch break start and end, coffee break start and end, and workday end. It calculates also the total number of hours for the week. So you could use this Excel sheet to calculate how much time you spend working and then tell your employer that they have to pay you more. All right, we have six seconds remaining on our clock. Now this clock is not that accurate, so it will go to zero and it will stay there for a while. But hopefully it will 
generate something soon. All right, it's ready. That took quite a long time, at least a minute. So let's see what it came up with. All right, here we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And we have arrival, lunch start, lunch end, coffee break start, coffee break end. And we have workday end and we have total hours. Now let's see if this is correct. 10 hours, 30 minutes, that's a long workday. When did we start? 8. So it is G2 minus B2, which is not the correct formula. <laughs> so it almost got it right, but not quite. Let me click generate again and let's see if the next time it will do it right. All right, now it's ready. Let's see if this is calculated correctly. Okay, it looks similar. Okay, now it looks better. So 7 hours, 6.45, 7, 7.30 and 35.15. That looks like it's correct. So let's say if we change the arrival time on Tuesday to 8.00 and we check here, what happened? 35.15, 35.45. Yes, so now it calculates it correctly. So now we have this work time calculator where we can put in our lunch breaks and our coffee breaks and when we came to work and when we left and it will calculate the total hours worked for the week. Great. Now let's do a couple more. I have one more that is not that complicated but still pretty useful. So here we have just a calculator that takes in a product price, a tax percentage and a quantity and calculates the total price. So let's download this and see what it looks like. Okay, it's ready. Let's see. And here we have product price 10, tax percentage 15, quantity 5, and it's 57. And this is the formula it used. And I think this is correct. So if I put 100 and tax 15 and quantity 1, then it is 115, 2, then it's 230. So it works. Great. So if you need some kind of calculator in Excel, this is a very simple tool you can use to do that. And you can actually try this out at prompttoxls.com. I just registered this domain and put this website up and running today. Now, I hope that my teeny tiny server on AWS will be enough to host this website. Now, I have limited this so that it can only generate one thing at a time. So if there's multiple people trying to use this, then you're going to have to wait until the others are processed before you can process yours because I have to pay for the OpenAI API and I'm providing this for free. So I don't want somebody to just spam me with requests and then I get a huge bill from OpenAI. But now let's try one more thing. This one very rarely works, but I've had it work. So here we have a student grading tool for a teacher to grade the results of a test, which has 15 questions. The spreadsheet should have the columns, question number and points. Every question will get 1 to 15 points. In the end, below the questions and points, all the points should be added together. The maximum possible points should also be calculated. Then a grade should be calculated based on the student's points as a percentage of the maximum possible points. And then here I have the grading table. So let's see if this works. This works maybe one time out of five. Perhaps my explanation is not that great. <laughs> if you can explain better, then it will do what you want it to do. Now I have this mode here which basically changes the temperature that is used in the OpenAI API, which basically adds more randomness or something. In this case, I call it creativity. Okay, that was pretty fast, actually. So let's see what we have here. When it's fast, it usually doesn't work. So <laughs> division by zero. Okay, so the formula is if B16 as a percentage of max possible points is more than 0 0.9, then A, okay but we get a division by zero because right now it's zero. And then we have points one to five, which is the reason why we get zero here, because this will be the sum of all of these, and this will be sum five times count if. Okay, <laughs> let's see what happens if I remove all of these, and if I add here five points, then we get an A. <laughs> okay, so it's almost correct, but this formula is wrong. This should actually be count a of these and times five so that's the maximum wait a minute uh, i have to <laughs> to put something in all of these okay so now 70 is the maximum points which is 14 times five okay so now we get an f if <laughs> we have five four and zero everything else so let's add some numbers here still an f 
we add some 5, now we have a D, now we have a C, and now we have a B. So it's working. I had to just fix the maximum possible points. And now we have an A. That is great. So it works, and it works surprisingly well, I might say. Now, you're probably wondering, how did I do this? How did I make it generate Excel documents with formulas and with styling? Well, in today's video, I'm not going to get fully into how I made this. Perhaps in a future video I will do it, if this video gets enough likes. I actually tried to make a video of me creating this system, and I filmed it twice for three hours, but I wasn't able to finish it, so then I stopped filming and then I finished it, and it took me three days to do it. So it wouldn't have been a very interesting video. It was a lot of trial and error. Now, I can tell you this much, that I started by creating a CSV file with the OpenAI API, which is easy. Let me go to ChatGPT and show you. Aha, we have actually GPT-4 right now. So let's try this. So I can say something like, create a CSV file of the employees of an imaginary company with their names, ages, salaries, and job descriptions. And then I can add, add an Excel formula to one cell to calculate the average salary of all the employees. So here I'll provide you with the data in CSV format and you can paste it into your preferred tool. I'll also provide an example of how to calculate the average salary in Microsoft Excel. And then it will generate a CSV file. Now it didn't add the average calculation here, but it showed us how to do it. So then I just had to tweak the prompt a lot to make it work correctly. And in the end I did not use CSV because I wasn't able to format it. I had to use a different method. If you want to see a video where I show you how I did it, then leave me a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel. So maybe if enough people want to see it, then I will do that video. But for now, this is the end of today's video and I hope you go and you try this out and tell me in the comments if it worked and if you found it useful and what did you use it for. By the way, this doesn't actually only work in English. You can use any language. So you can type the prompt in your own language and it will make the spreadsheet. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. And if you find this helpful, then you can see this support button here. You can click here and then you can go down here and buy me a gig of RAM because I need RAM. Thank you.